All right, hey everybody, today I am going to show you how you can easily install SIPP on Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Now what is SIPP? SIPP is a great tool that you can use for testing various scenarios as a UAC or a UAS. In other words, you can easily um, load test a back-to-back -back UA, an SBC, an Asterix box, um, Camaillo, open SIPs, whatever you have, you can easily go through and load test that. It also allows you to do some interop testing where you don't have maybe a soft phone setup or you don't have a hard phone setup or a PRI going over to an IAD. It's a great tool for going through and testing that. Now in this video, I am not going to show you how to use SIPP, just how to install it and how to easily install it if you're using Ubuntu 16.04. I'm going to use an install script that I've created. I've put that up on GitHub, and I will include the link for that in the uh, video description. If you're using a different platform, you could easily go through and modify the script and make it work for your needs. The main thing you're going to have to change is the syntax on the package installer. So let's get started. I've already connected into this box here. It's a fresh install of Ubuntu 16.04. And the first thing I'm going to have to do is actually grab the URL so I can clone this guy. So if you haven't used Git before, Git is a great tool that you're going to be able to use for version control and it makes it super easy to grab files that other people have written as well if they have them on GitHub. So let's get this downloaded with a Git clone and then the, uh, the link to this. It's going to clone this into a directory named SIP installer and in this directory I've got just a couple of files. I've got one that's named sipinstall.sh. So let's quickly just take a look at this file. Up at the top here, up at this section, I just have a bunch of comments. Don't need to worry about those right here. A couple of other things. I've got this set so that if it encounters an error, it's going to fail and it's going to you're going to see it up on the screen. You also need to run it as sudo because there's a couple of things that you're going to need for that. Uh, first, it's going to do an app get update, and it's going to update recent versions of all the packages. Then it is going to go through and do really what I would call the magic of it. It is going to run a loop and grab all of these dependencies, and any of these dependencies that have a sub-dependency, it will go through and automatically grab those. After it finishes up that list, it is going to obtain the SIP source file. It's going to untar it into the slash opt directory. It's going to change directories and then it is going to go through and do this make command with this auto reconf syntax as well. And then we're going to create a symbolic link into user local bin sip p so that you can run this from anywhere on the command line. And then it's also going to clone a very fantastic repo of some sip p scenarios. So let's get started here. As you can probably see if you are used to Linux, I cannot execute the script. So what I first need to do is change some permissions. Let's do a sudo chmod plus x sip p. Let me make this guy lowercase. Cool. Now I can actually execute this. So to execute it, we're going to do sudo dot slash sip p install dot sh. And now we sit back and let the magic happen. First, as I said, it's going to do a package update. It's going to grab a bunch of new packages. And this is going to take a while for this to go through and process. And if you are on a fresh install, it may take anywhere from like 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the speed of your system, your internet connection, and everything else that it's got to do to go and get it. So while it's doing that, I am going to continue and drink my cider that I'm drinking while I'm making this video. So if there's any, you know, like speech issues or anything like that, it's probably because I made this while drinking tonight. So, cheers. All right, still just going through and grabbing all these dependencies. Right, like, who sits there on a Sunday night with nothing else to do other than making an install, install script? Apparently me. Apparently me. Grabbing a bunch of lib SSL packages right now so that we can do some encryption. Doot, 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 doot. Like I said, 
This is way better than having to just manually go through and download every single one of these packages. If you've ever tried to install SIPP and you go to do that make on it, it is just like this dependency nightmare that you're gonna go through and it's just going to make it a little bit further and then fail. And then you have to look and see what it failed at. So hopefully you can use the script and you know let my fails that I've came across benefit you. Still going on this, we're getting libpcap0 right now. So one of the cool things that SIPP can do is if you have a pcap, you can use the audio from it and play it. So you just run this and if you have like a pre-recorded audio and you want the other side to hear it, you put it in a pcap, play it through, and it's really, really great. I've used this for testing like on Polycom phones and a couple of other platforms when I just needed to make tons and tons of calls or off of a like very busy trunk going off of an Acme SBC. All right, we are getting close to the end of the dependencies. I think it's going to grab make, um, it's going to grab bison, it's going to grab maybe a few other things, and then it is going to go in and grab the... Um, the actual files to install SIPP. Almost there, almost there. I might be lying, probably lying. GCC5, ah, yep, got a few more. Forgot I had to keep adding a few in. So I'm gonna drink some more. And yeah, I'm sitting on my floor. This is one of my favorite spots to sit. I've got this table that's like a perfect height. Just come here, write some code. I lean back against it. And I'm just letting this thing install. So hey, it works for me. Don't judge or do. Doesn't matter to me. Cool, so I am, where am I at? Come on, finish up. All right, yeah, you can see here it's getting get. It's grabbing get right now. It's just doing an update on that have that in there just for the heck of it. All right, bison, getting close. Cool, now we're actually doing the magic. We grab SIPP and we are doing a make on it. This part will take a while and this is normally where you are going to just fail after fail after fail after fail if you don't have these uh, dependencies already handled. And whenever you fail on this, you have to start all over and it's a big pain. So don't worry about it. All right, what you're gonna see now in purple, you're gonna see a bunch of warnings. Don't worry about those. It's really just about the way that some of this is written in the SIPP files and on make, saying it's a deprecated conversion from string constant to a different format. Don't worry about it. When all is said and done, SIPP will run just fine. This part actually goes through pretty quick. So after we finish up this, we are going to grab this repo of really awesome scenario files. We're gonna make a symbolic link, and then we are going to be able to run SIPP. Coming up pretty quick, cool. All right, now as you see at the bottom line here, you can now run SIPP by typing sudo SIPP anywhere. So why sudo? If you want to run PCAPs and play audio, you can go through and modify a bunch of things on the file system, but it's usually easier just to run it as sudo. That's my opinion. So you can now type sudo SIPP, cool now allows me to run that. Now, as I said in the beginning part of the video, it's going to install it into opt. So you can see SIPP33 here. And one of the things that's in here is SIPP scenarios. These are all the scenario files that I just grabbed. Again, I'm not gonna show you guys how to actually run these scenarios in this video, but just so you can take a quick look. Ah, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Vim, might help if I actually copy it. Let me grab a different one. So one, nope, nope, Vim. You know what, I'm just gonna type this. Vim, SIP, UAC, those are your options. So just an XML file. Um, if you're used to looking at SIP, you're gonna see some very, very familiar things here. You're going to see these which would allow you to do variables from the command line. But that's about it. I mean, this is such a time-saving script, and I hope you use it. Again, if you're using a platform other than Ubuntu 16.04, modify the script. You may go through a couple of hit or misses, but 
for the most part, this should get you on a fast track on where you need to be. So I will see all of you in the next video, which will be on how to actually use SIPP. Thank you, everybody.